to accept your assignment, accept your assignment from God where he trusts you with an assignment as an ambassador of Christ, uh, assignment to go and do the good works that he has prepared for you because you are his masterpiece. Through your works, he needs to be seen. B, you cannot accept your assignment and do it in an accurate way if you don't believe your blueprint. Everybody say, believe your blueprint. It's only through the word of God that you will be accurate in your assignment. You cannot be ambassador of Christ. You cannot be ambassador of Italy, but you don't know anything about Italy. What a, what a freak show. What a joke. The guy. And you, when you sit there and you're an ambassador, when you're out there in Blue Fontaine, in, in, this, in the city, wherever you go, if you're an ambassador for Italy and you just give your own opinion and do whatever, they're going to fire you within a few hours. Hello? But God believes you will not speak from yourself. You will only speak his kingdom principles because you are, John 17, you are in this world, but you are not from this world. As the Father sent me, so I sent you, Jesus says. Why? Because you are in this world, but not from this world. So get the from this world out of you by God's grace in Jesus' name. Amen. God can help us with that, and it can happen, and it will happen. Let it be so. Believe your blueprint. So when you take this, then it produces the gift, the gift from this faith as a gift from God. And that's how you are saved, by faith. But it's not your faith. It's a faith as a gift from the word. That when you open the word, when the devil opens the word, and the devil knows the word, but he doesn't have the gifts of a faith in the context of a relationship. But faith that saves you from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light that faith is a gift from this word from god himself the living word that gift for you that is to focus beyond the facts that's f but we are with v a accept your sign believe your blueprint commit to communicate remember commit to communicate if there's not any relationship, you can accept your assignment, but you don't get the word, you get in, don't get into the word. You better believe the blueprint that you have for your assignment. Then you commit to communicate because you're not going to understand what God is saying. So many times, remember the old lady at the well, we talked about that. But progressive communication, she stayed in communication. Oh, she spoke, spoke to Christ, and Christ spoke to her, and the first thing is about her needs. Whoa, Lord, if you can give me water that I don't have to come here again. If somebody will drink from me living water, they will never thirst again. Wow, God, that's a bargain. Uh, please, give me from that water, because then I don't have to come here every day. God, help me in my daily needs. God, help me in my daily needs. And I can focus on that level, but I'm not speaking to him in who we truly, truly, genuinely are as the Messiah. But what he can do for me. But she kept on speaking. And then, whoa, yes, condemnation. You had five husbands. The one that you have now is not your husband. It's, it's, I'm gone. And in condemnation, she can walk away. Twenty times that that lady could walk away. But she stayed in communication. Until the point. Oh, I see you're a prophet. No, further, further, further. Until... He revealed himself, I am he, I am the Messiah. You stay in communication until God reveal himself in your communication with him. And in that place, then you go. So this lady, and there she went. She is the least one to be, to be qualified to become the evangelist to get the whole Samaria saved. But she was the one. She was the one. When you would see him for who he is, nations will change. Bluefontein will change. That school will change if you've seen him. If you've seen him, it doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter the mistake. My brother, my sister, you will change. You will speak to your flesh. You will speak to your weakness. You will speak to that voices of condemnation. You will speak and you will go with Christ into that place. Oh, are you still here? And it wasn't not the time for the Gentiles to be saved. It wasn't the time for the Sumerians to be saved. But this lady was so full of it. She went there and the whole Sumerian said, You know, we believed because of what you said. But now we believe because we've seen him. May that be your life. May that be your life in how you communicate with God about tomorrow. Not just to give you the, law, the water so that you don't have to struggle. So that your day is a little bit shorter with all the pressure and all the stuff. God, I need to see you in everything, in everything, where I go, 
You must be the center. Come to communicate. Then die against destruction. Die against destruction. You better die against destruction because it's a destructive force from hell. Whatever demons assigned to your life, but he can do nothing because he cannot tempt a dead body. Because you've been crucified with Christ, you died with Christ. That's where all the chachi rubbish of who you can be, that flesh, crucified with Christ, the power through the cross. Message of the cross, the power of God unto salvation. Tomorrow the power of God is there if you understand the word of the cross. And then when you walk in it, oh, I will boast in nothing except the cross. You still here? So when you die against destruction, then you will, if you want to follow him, it's not follow him and destroy yourself. No, follow him and deny yourself. Follow him and deny and deny is I worship you. I lay my life down. Not I come and I destroy my life in the name of religion. Destroy my life in the name of performance. Destroy, destroy my life in the, in the name of I try to take my forgiveness for what I've done wrong. Destroy my life so that other Christians or brothers and sisters, friends will accept me. Or so that I can look in the mirror and feel accepted because I'm doing the thing right. That is, try to follow the Lord and destroy yourself. No, no, no. Die against that destructive forces. The destructive fire is dealt with in the consuming fire. And by the consuming fire, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and look at Hebrews 12. Oh, I must not get into all this. Hebrews 12, talking about the discipline, and you need discipline, and you need to grow in discipline. Every child that he accepts, he disciplines. And all of that stuff that you need to deal with. And at the end, he says... For God is a consuming fire. But that is not, be careful, you're going to burn in hell. No, 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 that is not that. Because God is a consuming fire. He's going to help you. That fire is the place of protection. That fire is the place of protection against the destructive fires, against all the, all the other rubbish that can reign in you and destroy your life. Deny yourself and destruction cannot come against you. Die against destruction. Get that teaching? Our Father's own channel. Then E, we talked about energize to evangelize. Energize to evangelize. Evangelize, you're a messenger. Evangelism, evangelist, you're a messenger of Christ. Where you go, why will you speak? It's like fire shut up in my bones. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is over you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit is coming over you and you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. Holy Spirit in you, yes, because you are saved. Because you're temple of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit over you is the hand of the Father over you. And where the hand of the Father moves, now you move into that meeting. The hand of the Father is there. Why? Because he wants to do something. That place is going to be blessed. Because you know how to walk under the hand of the Father. And Father is going to touch someone. He's going to touch the agenda in that meeting. He's going to touch the agenda. He's going to touch the discussion. Because you understand how the hand of the Father is on you. Because of when your Holy Spirit came over you, you will be having this energy to evangelize. This energy is, ah, I just need to speak about this. But if the hand of bitterness is over you, it's just coming up and you need to speak about that guy that you're bitter against. Are you with me? So I, that fullness of, I, I, I cannot but... Speak about the negativity. Yeah, but it cannot be because this and this. And it's just going to be bad in the country. And this going to happen and that going to. Because you're so full of it. That negativity. The hand of that demon of negativity is just over you. And where you go, the hand of that demon of pessimism or criticism or bitterness. or is just there. You bring the depression into the, into the room. Oh, where you move, you bring the hand of God into that school where you are giving, where you're a teacher. Getting, bring the hand of God into that hostel, into that classroom, into that place at university. The hand of God is there because the hand of God is on his church. But you can be saved by not allowing the hand of the Father to be on you. By not allowing the Holy Spirit to come over you. Otherwise... You are energized to evangelize. We leave that. Now we are at what? Number F today. Focus beyond the facts. You cannot focus beyond the facts. 
you'll be just a product of the facts. And people can manipulate the facts. People can organize with their skill, with their mind, with things that are awesome because it's given by God, but you just use it for your own glory and at the strength of your own hand. Not by, spire, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. Amen? But if you allow these processes, these foundations that we talked about, you can come into the place to focus beyond the facts, but the key is you can write there, truth, truth, truth can see beyond the facts. Facts, facts. You want to stand on the facts and we can evaluate on the, based on the facts. Oh, based on the facts, you have one right, human rights. We're standing for human rights. You have one right, die and go and burn in hell. That's your human right. Yes, if you want to stand on it. But there's something beyond the facts. According to the facts, it, Jesus is not the one that's supposed to die. He's not, according to the facts, he's not the one that's supposed to take all our rubbish and deal with our rubbish on the cross. But according to the truth, beyond the facts, there's a father that loves us so much that he gave his son. There's the truth. You only find Christ beyond the facts. And then one day, maybe there's a lot of facts on the table. Yeah, but you cannot be super spiritual. Yes, you can't be super spiritual. Because, but when you look at the facts, don't make a decision. Then you ask God, based on the facts that is in front of me, Lord, I lay it at your feet. What are you telling me? And God says, what you figured out there, your logic is my logic. And then you go and you can do it because you got confirmation from God that the way you thought was from him. It was right. So don't be super spiritual and just, oh, this fact, I just give it over to you, God. If you give it over to you, God, you, you cannot dump it with God. When you give it over, you allow him to speak to you and say, okay, let's look at this together. And this is how we're going to deal with this intimidation that you experience in your finances or in your relationships or in this or in that. And then you speak to him, remember? Because you laid the foundation commit to communicate. So to focus beyond the facts and you feel intimidated, you're tired, you feel flat with the things that you experience. It's the fact that I feel I'm fed up. Oh, that right. The fact that you feel you are fed up. All right. You have it. That's a fact. But now you're going to go beyond the fact. And say, where's the truth? His name is Jesus. I need Jesus to be in the facts. Not I first need the facts to change, and then I will acknowledge Jesus and thank him. Lord, I trust you for the facts. No, no, no. You first need to find Christ, the truth, in the midst of the facts of your challenges of your whatever. Make sure Christ is the center of your success. Because if you take him out of your success, success become your, your, the one that you worship. Success become, like we said, don't, I will not anymore call the work of our hands our gods. That's when you focus on your work more than on God. And God is working for you. Because in the morning and the evening, please God, guide me, help me, give me wisdom, help me with this, help me with that, give me favor and that, protect me with this. Here's your job description for today. Lord, please, thank you. I acknowledge I need you. Thank you. And there you go. He's part of your business. I mean, you give him a space. You give him a place. Hmm. <laughs> or maybe he's supposed to be the owner, the CEO. And you need to ask him, what must you do for him? And how is he going to do it with you? God, I can do this, but I cannot do this on my own. I will do what you ask me to do, but I cannot do it on my own. So you need to know where he is. What are you doing in the, what do you call that thing, photocopy room? What are you doing there if you are supposed to be out speaking to some of the clients? Because God is there with the clients. Now, I, I'm, it's, it's just an example. You're with me. But you, what are, what are you here? in the office and do it for the Lord and he's a CEO, he's an owner, he's a whatever. You're busy with dead works. You're busy with works of darkness. No darkness, I'm not with the devil. It's other works with the light or works with the darkness. In the light you can focus beyond the facts. Focus beyond the facts through truth. Truth, that is all about what? First scripture. Write down. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith... It's assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Titled. Everybody say title deed. When you have a title deed of a priest of property, 
Amen. You come with authority into that place. That's finished. It's yours and finished. And what is yours is yours by faith and through faith and through faith alone as a gift coming, flowing as a result from the word that is in you. Amen. Things we hope for. Being the proof. Everybody say proof. Are things we do not see. And the conviction of the reality. Conviction of the reality. There's a reality that only the Christian can know. There's a reality that only a, a child can know, the father that chooses to say, I want to see the way God sees. I want to go beyond the facts. Focus beyond the facts. I can only see what my father sees if I focus beyond the facts. But you have, if you don't put the, what do you mean, I put the far kijker, the far, the far kijker. What's that? Binoculars. I don't know if I have the binoculars on. Then I can see there. You know, at least you have some uh, seven brain cells, all of us, at least, that tells you, you must take that and pull it, then you will see there. Yeah, it's logic, hey. So if this binoculars, you cannot see through this binoculars, you will not see beyond the facts. It's impossible. You cannot see. The world cannot see. They cannot see what you see. You can see the solutions for South Africa. You can see the solutions. And, and if the church will start to rise, then there will be answers. There will be answers for the city and for the nation. God's going to help you. What proof do you need? No, in the, in the court case, you need proof. And the proof, the facts, has authority. How much more? How much more? How much more? How much more is the truth the final authority? If in the court case, the facts, bring me the proof in the court case. No, the case is thrown out. There's not enough evidence. But the, the only type of evidence you have in your life is through faith. Faith is the manifestation of this evidence. Faith is the manifestation of this evidence. And this evidence will only get in the court case of your life, the court case of this nation that we need to be condemned because of the Hamors and the rabbis that we've done as a nation. There's a proof, there's proof that we're supposed to be destroyed. There's proof that this nation needs to go under. There's proof that this nation must just end up in a hellish Hamors. There's enough proof that it must happen. But there's a proof behind it when the church rise up as intercessors, just rise up to go walk beyond, beyond the fact and say, God, the truth of your grace, the truth of your mercy, the truth of your insight. Give us, give us the capacity to see beyond, to see beyond the facts. Because our nation needs you. Our nation needs to be dependent on you. And if the nation is dependent on you, we are standing in the middle as facilitators. We need to give the binoculars first to ourselves and look to see what he sees. And then give it to others. Give the word to others. Bring the word into the place where you go. Focus beyond the facts. Tell your neighbor. God will challenge you, my brother, my sister. We're talking about good works, dead works. But the good works for you to do, you cannot see that good works. And you cannot see how you're going to do it. God will not just reveal it to you. Because if you don't receive it by faith, most of the time you'll not be able to do what God asks you to do. Hello? There is no time. I cannot see there is no time. Really, for the word, God knows my heart. Oh, okay. Yeah, then it's, not, it's a little bit rotten. If my heart is with God, my heart, I will have time for the word. What is priority? Well, there will be time for your priorities. Finish. Finish. So you will get into the word. But what I want to say, okay, focus beyond the facts. You come into that situation. The hand of God is on you, like we said. If I walk with the Spirit and allow the Spirit over me, are you getting to? Are you getting to? Pick and pray. You get into the spa, wherever you go. God is with you. Why? Focus beyond the fact of the bread and the butter that you are buying. Not beer and that type of rubbish, eh? No, 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 I'm not saying, if you are, don't take condemnation if you drank a beer. You're not going to hell. I mean, I'm just saying, oh, I'm wasting time. Okay, let's go on. Focus beyond the facts. So why are you there? Why are you there? Focus beyond the facts. 
if you need to speak about Christ, God wants to speak to somebody. God wants, God wants to do something. So start with a soft target, if you must say. Go to the old auntie. Go to the old auntie. Tell the auntie, God is with you. Tell the old auntie, God has heard your prayers. You don't know how many people I spoke to, old aunties. When I tell them, God has heard your prayers, just leave it with her before the Lord. They just start to cry. They just start to cry. There's so many of that old aunties walking past you. They need to hear that. They need to hear that. God has heard your prayer. Just leave it. Leave it. Don't take it back in worries, through the worry about your child, your grandchild. And you know, and I said, I believe I said prophetically, even the first service, and maybe you must go out there and you must say to 20, 20 of that old aunties, because somewhere there's an old auntie where you're going to look the same, same features as the grandchild maybe. And they, the children and the grandchildren just dumped her in the old age home. And here comes somebody that, has this, that looks like my daughter or my granddaughter and telling me, remember you are precious to Christ. And what you've done, that what was wrong, God has forgiven you. What was right, there will be a harvest through your child and your grandchild. That old lady will never be the same again. Never be the same again. If I have at least brought myself into a place to focus beyond the fact, I want this and God come and provide according to the facts. This, 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 this. Have a life. Have a life. Not try and survive to get bread and milk and this and this for yourself. Having a life is doing it with God. Amen. Because you lock into the place of God. Your capacity. There's no end to the capacity of God of how what you could do in and through me. That's why Ephesians 3, 20. Now to him who by the power that is at work worth in us. You can choose that the power is working within you but if the power of God is at work within us then the one who is able to do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think beyond our highest prayers desires thoughts hopes or dreams to him be the glory oh man Come to know that verse. That is the capacity of your God. And when you would lock into that place of seeing beyond the natural, seeing beyond the fact of your emotions that you are fed up, or beyond this, or beyond your success, see beyond your success, otherwise the sex, the, ooh, the success will become your curse. Success will see you, and you will be what? The product of your success. But there's no security in that. Your success cannot be your foundation. Only Christ and the revelation of who he is can be the foundation of your work. When Israel became successful, that was the excellent, most excellent temptation for their heart to be led astray into the Hamors. So that God first have to change the circumstances before they will look at him. Because eyes off, looking at the provision, looking at the blessings, looking at the success. How must he get the eyes back to him? Change this. Now I suddenly must put my eyes again there. You are still here? Hello? Okay. So, your capacity... Your capacity to evaluate. You have this capacity to see beyond the fact, my brother, my sister. So we've seen a Joseph, a Daniel, these guys. We've talked about this many times. That focus beyond the facts is first of all the facts. Here's Joseph. Whoa, man. He's just sharing the dreams that God gave him. Jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. Satan must try the jealousy. Jealousy make. The brother's keeper, the older brother, instead of a protector of the younger brother. Let's destroy his destiny. When the jealousy in you is focusing on that guy that is, that is intimidating you, that guy you are jealous, you feel uh, intimidated, threatened by that other guy. Because he got this blessing. You came in the same way, but he got the blessing. Okay, put the chamors in your heart. In your heart so that you can destroy your brother and you be destroyed 
curse on you, and you're destroying your brother with what you think, what you, what you speak over his life. That cannot be like that anymore. And both out of their destiny. Out. And God must bring another son. That was Abra, uh, Adam's children. But where are we now? We are with Joseph. And Joseph, ah, very good temptation. Oh, I just share. Why? 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 So unfair. They are nasty with me. Why? Throw me in the pit. Wanted to kill me. No, 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 no. Let's sell him, a, sell him to, to them. To the Egyptians. Okay. Now there. And I'm still unfaithful. And when the lady wants to come, I run. I run. But then I'm... Who, when you are accused wrongly, when people talk about you and you know this is unfair, you, you are blamed for this, but it's not even right. Even doesn't matter how you defend yourself, you are the one that are blamed. And now you are sitting in that jail. But you know, you can put yourself in a jail that is cursed from hell. By sitting in bitterness, by sitting in judgment, by sitting in, this was not right, this was not right. I'm looking at the facts around me, I'm sitting in jail, but thank you Lord, I was faithful. You tried things for the Lord, you tried to get into the word, you tried and you prayed and you, and it didn't work. Now here you're sitting in a jail, thank you Lord, when I submit my ways to you, you will give me the desires of my heart. But the desire of my heart wasn't to be in jail, Lord. I submitted to you and what now? I prayed. When you ask, you will receive. I received jail. But he could look and focus beyond the facts. So when the brothers came, what happened? The scripture that you all know, with that sentence, Genesis 50 verse 2, you intended to harm me. You intended to harm me, but God intended for it for good to accomplish what is now being done. What is now being done? What is done? What is done? Joseph says, I can see what God is doing, the good works that God is doing. If you can see the good works of what God is doing, you will do good works that is from him. That will stand, not, that will not be burned away the day that you die. But it will stand, it will stand. What am I saying? Here's the facts. You intended to harm me. And by the, according to the facts, I can throw you in jail. I can actually kill you. And uh, all of the judges in, 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 in Egypt will say, it was fairly done. You were right. You were able. You had the right to kill them or put them forever in jail. But let's look beyond the facts. But God. Everybody say, but God. Maybe you've heard that sentence, but this scripture you must remember. Remember the context of the scripture. Remember the context of the scripture. There's not just a thing about, but God, if you don't push yourself to see beyond the facts. You can put the facts before God. This is what happened. That guy belittled me. That guy talked behind my back. That guy, that lady lied about me. This, but God has a plan for me to walk in, in patience, for me to get a revelation about forgiveness, for me to rise up in stature, for me to not be a product of what people say about me, for me to be free by the truth. Truth will set you free. By fact, you are cursed. By fact, you are bound. By fact, you will stay in works of darkness. If you have be doing works in the light and the works of light, where the light is working in you, get out of that, forgive, that you can say, this, the, these are the facts, but God, but God had a plan. God had a plan. That the church will rise up. And in the politics, you better vote for it, for a party. You better vote for a party that will work with Christ. I'm voting for this party because this party is respecting God and they're going to work with God. No other party. Unless there's deception. No, but you do according to the word. Amen. Are you still here? Okay. Focus beyond. But that is when the church is supposed to rise up. You know when Joseph, when he said to the, to the king what must happen? When Daniel stood up and he told the king, one, two, three, four kings, that he spoke to them, what happened? He, he silenced the voice of all the sorcerers and the Juaras and all the uh, um, 
devil worshippers and all the uh, uh, guys that worship the ancestors, calling the ancestors for, for guidance. The, 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 what's, what's, what's here owns me dollars? Tour doctors, what's the tour doctor? Sangomas. All these Sangomas. And you know what? The king was a heathen. The king was a was a mampara. But still, the king said, silence all this rubbish, all the Sangomas, all these guys. Because the God of the church, they have the wisdom. They have the answers. You, the rest of you. What's the nice words for shut up? Okay, that one. <laughs> Say, be silent. Why? Because suddenly the church had a voice. Why? Because they could see beyond the facts. Focus beyond the facts. Because these foundations were built into the, their lives. The church going to rise up in maturity. Guys, in some other time, it's not going to be about ourselves. It's going to be what God wants to do. In the nation, somewhere it's gonna, we're gonna get into that. You won't believe it, but we're gonna grow up. <laughs> Amen. May God help you. May God help me. And that at that stage, it's like the government can be corrupt. You know why the Hamors is out there and there's no jobs and there's no this and there's no that? It's not because the government is corrupt. No, those governments they were corrupt. That Pharaoh, all that worldly governments where, where Daniel was, where he was serving, they were corrupt men. They were deceived. But when did things change? When the church rose up. When the Daniel and the Joseph stood up and he spoke beyond the, the truth be, that's beyond the facts. When there was somebody in the nation that could focus beyond the facts. And not just we as a church pray about the facts of what they're going to do. We pray against that facts. Yes, it's good. But where is the church that will open their mouth with the wisdom of God of what to do in this nation? And the and the and the king says and the government says, oh, just just shoot you all your other other Juaras, these these Sangomas and all these guys. Be silent. The God of the church. That's the only God. We will listen to that God. If the king, if the, the, the system will serve him, if the ministers, if the, if the guys in government will serve God or not, those kings, didn't, he didn't say that they started to serve God, but they said, everybody silence, only the God of Daniel, only the God of Joseph. He's the true God. May we grow up. May we grow up. I said, believe. Amen. Just tell your neighbor, grow up. Okay. Colossians 3.23, Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it. Everybody say work. work. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Whatever you do, you do a lot of things. You can do a lot of things and you're doing a lot of things and you can do that things and it's works of darkness if you don't work at it with all your heart. So there's a work that I must do. But while doing this work, I must also work that it is with my whole heart, so that the work will be for us if unto the Lord. Three jobs in that verse. There's the guys, they work, they do a lot of things out there, but they're going to hell. There's some guys, they work and they say they do it for Jesus. But it's work of darkness because they didn't hear it from God. God is not in it. The light is not in it. God is not the focus. So when I work, there's some extra effort. I must work at it with my whole heart. Why? Because I work to do it as if unto the Lord. It's, some, it's a work. It's an effort to focus on Christ in your work. There's, it's a work to put your whole heart in it because it's a worship unto the Lord. And then it's a work to do your work. Are you with me? And unfortunately, in the past, never in the future again, in Jesus' name. Many Christians, they just go to work and do their work and go through the day and say, God, help me through the day. Thank you, Lord, that you help me. Help me tomorrow also. Thank you, Lord. But it's going to be a work. It's going to be some effort to put your whole heart in it as worship unto the Lord. It's going to be a work to say, 
I'm doing this for Christ. But ooh, don't just, if you say it from your heart, if you do it for Christ, Christ is going to speak to you. The boss of your work, the boss entering in with you into the office, the boss is going to speak to you. So please don't pray and say, God, I'm doing this for you. If you're not willing to hear what the boss is saying, when you do it for him, it means he's the boss. And the boss is going to speak to you and say, go and encourage this lady. Focus first on this. Focus first on this. Hear from the boss. Hear from the CEO. Hear from the lady. Uh, is there something I can help you with? In your break time, don't make yourself coffee. Ask two people if they want coffee and go and make them coffee and give it to them and say, may God help you with, it, with what you need to do. How's your family? Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you must do all these things, all these things. And you just feel in your heart, um, look at page 24. Don't be super spiritual, you know. And if it doesn't work, you look at page 24, there's nothing wrong. It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes I looked at syllabuses, uh, syllabi that the guy set up in Kriari. There's more than 250 syllabi. But I, I know, more than 200, I never, I didn't check, even up till today. Trust the leaders, yeah. It's more like that, hey. But sometimes just open up something. Pastor, it's just this mistake. <laughs> but ask Holy Spirit not to waste time. Are you with me? Are you with me? Ask Holy Spirit to, with your eyes that you will see what he sees. Where must you focus? What must you do first? And you're going to ask him, but later on, you will have to ask him less because suddenly you just realize, yeah, I'm seeing what God is showing. I'm seeing what God is showing. I, I'm not, a, whatever, a builder, this, that. But sometimes the, the man that did an excellent job in building this, there was a guy full-time in, in, in the church that built these buildings. But I would come in... <laughs> I will just look and I say, that one is cute. That is not right. That. Look at me. But the, <laughs> this, this passage is going down to the bathrooms. They, it's cute. It's not cute, Pastor. It's cute. And up to the point, okay, just leave it. I will just walk away. And I said, okay, the school can have a skew. That's a mirror. Uh, like a skew wall. And I just walk away. But the guy that was with me, engineer, oh, uh, he was uh, like a perfectionist. The next day I came here, oh, the wall is broken down. Um, <laughs> the other guy said, this thing will be straight. So they took the water pass. What is a water pass? <laughs> that thing. <laughs> they took that thing and they saw it's skew. It's not like, hey, I have an eye. No, no, no. It's just in practical ways. Even trust God that you will, he will help you just to see it. You know you must phone. To, to sell this thing, you just know you must phone these four people. If it didn't work the first time or the second or the tenth time, so what? Practice. Practice how to go by faith. Practice how to focus beyond the facts and do what God has told you to do. Okay, nearly for a landing. The guy with the five talents, two talents, one talent. What is the next verse? Well done, good and faithful servant. Next one. I knew that you're a hard man harvesting where you have not sowed and gathering where you have not scattered. Well, what are we talking about? You remember again? Guy with the five talents, the two talents, the one talent. The talent, it wasn't a talent to play guitar. You can take it there, but it was talents of gold. It was guys to go and do business. They had to go and do business. The one did the business with the five talents, he became ten. You must be fruitful. You are only faithful when he doubles what God has given you. Not that you, when you have what, and you can give it back to God. No. That's an unfaithful, lazy servant. When God has given you something, and you can just give it back to him. No, but what you have when you are fruitful and it doubles and it multiplies, that is when you are faithful. But all that you've done belongs to him. Don't claim your success. Don't claim it for yourself. Are, are you with me? Well done, good and faithful servant. Why? 
because he gave it with excellence, with faithfulness. And for you and me to do that is unto the Lord. But this guy, Master, he said, I knew. I see. I know the facts. I know the facts. He couldn't see the truth that he must do it as if unto the Lord. But he knew the facts. And he was right. He was right. The master was wrong. And the guy that was right was the unfaithful, lazy servant. You can be so right in what you do, but be so lazy, so unfaithful unto the Lord that you will lose whatever God has for you. You will lose it in all your rightness. How that other person was wrong. That person belittled you. That person talked behind your back. That person did this. That, that guy was corrupt. And you can be right. Okay, you can be right. Remember you're right. Die and go to hell. There's only one right. And that is in Christ. In Christ, the Savior of your mess. The Savior that saved you from the mess in your life. Only in Christ, through the grace of God, you can have a destiny. So by grace, you will give people grace. Hello? And you will do what you do as if unto the Lord. But he saw. You can look at the facts and not beyond. The fact, you're a heart master. Fact, heart man. Fact, harvesting where you have not sown is unfair. What you do is unfair. We must do all the job and you get the benefit. And then you are hard and you boss us around and blah, 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 blah. And let's say you are right and the reader is wrong. You are still before God, the unfaithful, lazy servant. You can do your job tomorrow, but if you are based on right and wrong, you're the unfaithful, lazy servant. Lazy to do what? Lazy to do according to God's word. You can go through the day tomorrow, but if you didn't hear from God and maybe do certain things in the way how he would say to you and encourage that one and come into that situation, you start just to praise God, come into that situation and you just know I must... Now be silent, you just pray in tongues. That's a lazy servant. So the servant is not the guy that but himself frackwerk. The one that is lazy is not the guy that is not doing work at all. There can be a guy that is working himself frack. He's working himself, he's, he's dead at the end of the day to do all the work. But he was a lazy servant before God. Because what he did, did not multiply, because he didn't do it with God and for God. Lazy to hear from God. Lazy to spend time in the Word. Lazy to ask Him to guide you. Lazy to hear from Him. Lazy to obey Him then by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, every time. Because faith is effort. It starts with the Word. And sometimes to walk by faith is effort. Your emotions could feel drained sometimes to walk by faith. But faith is not just, I surrender to you. It's hearing then the strategy and do, do, do the strategy God has given you. Are you here? Is it not here? All right, next one. There we go. The master responded, you wicked, lazy servant. Throw that worthless servant outside. Throw that worthless servant out there. Not, not God says, okay. Because you were lazy, you're going to burn in hell. No, no, no. <laughs> you serve it. But throw him outside. Outside of where we are going. Outside of my world. Throw him outside there. But if you don't, you want to be part of what God is doing tomorrow. You don't want to be thrown outside. Because you must go through some process where you will grow up sitting and looking in the eye of a pig. And only then you say, oh, it's not about give me, give me, give me. It's about make me. Prodigal son, look in the eye of a pig, and then you realize, hey, I will be a servant. I will go and serve in my father's house. Not what can I get from my father, what can I give? Hello. And when he went home, make me a servant. No. When you humble yourself, God will lift you up. Come on, man. You don't deserve it. You prodigal son that messed up everything. You don't deserve it. But by God's grace, Father is so excited about you coming home. He says, you have no reason to be ashamed. Through my son, you are cleansed. But come with humble heart. Your humility will protect your heart. Humility will protect your heart. Wisdom will protect your choices. Amen. Let it be so. Next one. Okay, Zechariah. 
What are we saying? In your work, in that what you do, focus beyond the facts. You need to see the man. Let's say, I need to see the man. There's a man in your life and he's the man. Men, he's the role model how to be a man. Woman, he's the man. Not some other guy that you must find security. You must have acceptance. You must speak to the guy. And when you have the guy, you're okay. When the guy is dropping you, oh, your whole life is in shacks and in scrambles. Scrambles, something like that. What's the word? Yeah, that thing. So, <laughs> why? May God bring you there tomorrow. If Christ is not the man, so that from of the day after tomorrow, you will do it differently. I always tell the ladies, he must be the man. And I tell the other guy, you don't touch what you can't afford. There's other man. There's other man in your life. You are the second guy. You are the second guy. And only if that man, that man gives you the right to touch this man, then you touch the man. Are you here? So you respect. You don't go and cheat. You don't go in adultery and go, ha, foofy, 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 that lady. But when the man is not doing it, you know, ladies, then when that guy is doing that, you know, you cannot trust that guy. You cannot trust. He really doesn't respect you. He does not respect you if he wants to fray you. He does not respect you. Because now, whoa, I don't know how to translate it. Knijpje katten niet donker. Uh, whatever. You English guys, where is the, the thing? Okay, whatever. You, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna wara wara in the, in the dark. <laughs> you know, now the kick, the kick, the kick is in the dark. Lady, now you see, this is a type of man I'm going to marry. That he's, kaf, he's fraying his car snoofy, snoofy in the dark. So when you are married, when you are married, what? That man, that man learned that the uh, uh, fluffy, fluffy is in the dark. The kick is in the dark. So how will that guy get the kick? By cheating on you. Because he didn't learn how to do it as a worship, as, as a gift from God in the light. So, for him to get the kick in the dark, he must cheat on you. you. Please marry that guy that will cheat you. Because you and him were cheaters in the dark. Che- cheating on the man, the man, the man. Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, man. Focus beyond the facts. The fact is, you desire her now. The fact is, she's very pretty. Okay? The truth, she belongs to the man. I will not touch. I will respect. I will respect. And only when he makes us one, then it will be something different. Okay? There was this couple. I don't know why I focus on this. There was this couple, and when they got married, I, we were told the guys, um, give us a call or something, or just a thumbs up, or if everything is fine, if you want to ask something, you know? So this one couple after the first night, they phoned us. And they said, we feel so guilty. Because they connected the, the sex with sin. Because it was always in the dark. So sex and sin is so connected. We must feel guilty. We must confess it. In sex, instead of, oh, instead of a gift from God. I we just told them, go out there, look at the stars, and worship the Lord for the gift of sex. And bring it to the light. So that God can make it pure. And it was it. We get some, got some, a uh, few thumbs ups after that one. But <laughs> what am I saying? Guys, ah, oh, please, men, are you with me? Look at him. Behold him. Now this. Four. You're writing this down, eh? Behold. Look at. Keep in sight. Watch the man, the Messiah, whose name is the branch. For he shall grow up in his place. And he shall build the true temple of the Lord. He will grow up. He will stand up. He will be manifested in you. He's like the branch. He will come and and work and, and live through you and be seen through you. 
He will manage himself through you so that he can build his temple, so that he can build with you a home for Father God. Amen. Behold. You right there, behold. What's that? It's when you captivate it. Captivate it. Captivate it. That's worship. Be captivated by the man. Behold the man. Are you with me? Because then you put your heart there. You put your heart there. You put your focus there. That little boy, he uh, has a hero. X-man, A-man, B-man. What's all that stuff? He-man. What other man is there still? Spider-man. <laughs> and you won't believe it. He wants, he wants the pucky. He wants the... Oh, where's my English today? He wants the... What's the suit? The suit. This is a suit, man. Okay, whatever. He has a thing. And he wants to walk the way he walks. He wants to do this. He wants to jump off a cliff. He wants to do that. Why? Because he beholds his hero. You know, when you start to behold the man Jesus Christ, there's something in here that you just want to walk like he walks. You want to speak what he speaks. You want to do what he's doing. You want to. Don't try and walk and walk, try and walk on water immediately. Okay. What, what am I saying? Hey, are you still here? Behold the man. Behold the man. Worship. Talk about, wow, you know what God is doing. Wow, you know what God is doing. Behold the man is, when you look at the stars, come on, man. When you look at nature, when you look at so many things in the world, you can behold the man because you say, wow, look what my God has done. Look what my dad has done. You brag about your dad. You brag about your hero, Jesus Christ. You brag about the one that's making, you yeah, know, he's making, I have such an excellent trainer. I have such an excellent trainer. I, I, I worship this trainer of mine. His name is the Holy Spirit. And he's helping me. Behold the man. Are you with me? Second one. Look at. Look at the man. It's just like. Has to do with I can see. And, and in a natural way I can see him. In a natural way. You come into a situation. And you started to know the word so much. That you just know what God is saying. You just have peace. Or you don't have peace. You look at the situation, come on man, you look at that lady and you know how she looks at you. Ah, ah, run, Mr. Manier, run. Or you look at that guy, you know, and he starts to jaw dropping. Run, baby, run. <laughs> no, 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 no. You tell that man, get that lust out of you in Jesus' name before you run. Hey, man, maybe you save him from himself. Okay, are, are you still here? Why? Whatever. Look at, so, in that sense, just sometimes God wants to just have a conversation with you. No major agenda. No freeslicker worship in the sense of, now you must bow and worship, you must do that. No, no, no. Sometimes he just wants to be there. That you just can look at him. And now he's there. Are you with me? Keep in sight. Keep in sight. I say you can write there, give strict uh, focus and attention. When, where, what he's doing. Because in the good works that you are doing, in the good works that you must do, sometimes there's just a suddenness. God is never late. He's just very sudden. And because he's very sudden, coming like a thief in the night, not only one day, but tomorrow, in your day, he's going to rock up like a thief in the night. You know, like in the day after he rose from the dead. Just walk through the wall, you know. He's just suddenly there, boom. He can walk through the walls in your life. He can walk, hey, he can walk through that stronghold. He can th walk through the natural in your life. He can, that natural, oh, you don't know. You see no solution. And suddenly through that wall, Jesus walks, just walks in suddenly. But give strict attention is effort. Keep him inside means it's going to take effort. It's going to take effort. There's a lot of voices. There's a lot. Keep him inside. Uh, it's not here. It's like some of you guys that play games. Only three of you that play in games. You know, but you must keep that thing inside. You must over here and all that stuff. Hello? You must focus. Focus. Keep him inside. Focus beyond the facts. 
It's focus on him. And teach yourself. It's taking effort. It's going to be effort, my brother and my sister. <sighs> Fear will give you a natural way just to focus on the chamorz that will bring you more fear. Stress will help you to focus on the things so that you get more stress because he wants to have more rooms into your life. He wants to be more at home with you. But God, through his word, when you focus and give strict attention of where he is, there will be more of him in you, more of him in you. That has eternal value. That will make your life particularful, significant, meaningful, significant. Tomorrow you can have a significant life. You can have a meaningful appointment. It can be significant when you study your maths or your whatever, when you have that conversation. Tomorrow can be meaningful when you are leading that group, when you must give a presentation. Morning, it can be significant. I'm not talking about you must have a two-hour Bible study with this guy. No, but it can be significant. That's what God has for you, man. That's what he has for you. Last one, watch. Be alert for sudden movements. Be alert for sudden movements. Watch. If you don't keep him in sight, you'll not be able to watch. Just suddenly. You just suddenly know that. It's just, you focus on that. Are you with me? And sometimes that watch, that sudden move is, can be so awesome. One of the most beautiful things for me when I was leading worship for more than 20 years was when I would worship and so I would look up just suddenly and I just like, I'm looking up and pew, I'm looking at somebody who's breaking through, who's surrendering and you can sense it, you can feel it, how that guy is opening up with gentleness and humility and brokenness and you see how God is touching. That was one of the major uh, blessings for me when leading worship. I've seen that gentle opening up and God putting his hand on there. Oh man, may God help you man to see so much more. How the flowers and how the skies declare the glory of the Lord. Ah, oh, let's have a significant life by focusing beyond the facts. As you know here, so that watch is just suddenly God's going to do something. So, like we said, uh, we testified about this 17 times. So we're going down. What's the one going past the Muslim Mall? You don't know that road. Okay, that road. And he's go further on to Park Avenue. And then you go further on to the church. And in the past, it was a double road. It go like this, around. And when we got there, and suddenly I feel, just suddenly, 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 suddenly I feel, I must, and go behind this, this car. Why? That's stupid. Because just around the corner, I must turn to the left to go to Rose Avenue, to go to Rose Avenue. So the two lane, instead of just around the corner, go left into, come here. And go behind us. Four seconds later, when we got into the, there was a small truck that just at I don't know what speed over the red light. <laughs> there were hot tears and Dr. Fulunda just over the red light. And this guy in front of me even, you know, well, that sounds like a donkey. Whatever. <laughs> With a tire on the tar, like this. Well, it would have been, we would have been gone. We would have been gone. You know, they were like only like three times we did put the mistake, but it's not that we took Jaden when he was a baby, and Jalina had it in for like five seconds on a lap. It was then he was on a lap, and when that happened, thank you, God, God, help me to watch for that sudden move, that sudden guidance that will just be in you. Started with Kriari, and there we are, and it's me and the secretary in a good way, and we are the only uh, staff in Kriari. And so we're coming from Joburg, driving, 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 I want training 130, and I want to pass, I want to pass, and as I want to pass, I just felt, no, slow down. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous what God would give you. According to the facts, it's stupid, man, just, just pass. Why in the middle of the road where you can go 120, you want to go slow? And I go slow up till 60. 60 kilometers an hour. And I don't know why. 
And the next moment, the front tire burst. Boom! Not just get something, a flat tire burst. And I just went off. Hmm. We didn't tell one another, but we got out of the car starting to praise God. Not tell one another to praise God. We just praise God. <laughs> Watch for that sudden move. Where God would just want to do something. Focus beyond the facts. Just say that. Thank you, God, for who you are. Lord, help us to understand that the quality of that what we do will only be able to happen. It can only happen if we can focus beyond the facts through the truth of your word. You are the truth. You are the truth. And through truth, God, you have give us this awesome privilege to be set free by the truth to do the works that you have prepared for us to do. I pray that every man, woman in this place will be captivated by who you are, to behold you, that they will worship you. They will be so afresh, fall in love with you and fall in love with your word, Lord. They will love to read your word, love to take your word into their hearts. Let it be so in Jesus' name, my God. I honor you for that. I thank you that you're going to help us to understand that. And for each one here, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in that name alone. And all say, Amen, Amen. amen.